there are some comments around the time also. So we should probably see if somebody wants to volunteer for a doodle and what times we can alternate with. Yeah, that's always a tricky one to rejuggle re the time. But yeah, someone always gets screwed. And with like Alex Alaska and Australia, it's always, <laughs> always difficult. And when we did the when we did the alternating times, it was like good for the first couple of weeks, and then it yeah. just became confusing to everybody. So. I think the big takeaway then was to try and push as much things to be asynchronous as possible. I think one of the problems we ran into is that we ended up having two completely disjoint meetings, unless you've Correct. got someone who agrees to be the bridge between the meetings, who then recaps the meetings between the meetings. <laughs> Are we doing recordings back then? Because I've seen a bunch of people give feedback after they've watched the recording. Yeah, I think we've been doing yes, but um, yeah, it, it, it didn't seem like the recordings even really factored into it because I don't know how often people yeah. really watch and would carry that over into the next discussion. I've seen it work in the other uh, breakouts we have. So I was just wondering maybe if we get more rigor here. I don't know. Or people will say, oh, I'll just wait for my next meeting when it's on my time. I don't know. What's the ha, Phil? <laughs> Phil just made a bad IBM renaming joke recently that I just found funny. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't look up. Yeah. Uh, Kindrel? <laughs> yeah, I'm poking fun at my old employer. <laughs> Naming is hard, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> at least it, I obviously didn't upset too many people because the most likes on that tweet were old IBM friends. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, just because of the comment a few minutes ago, I mean, it's not big numbers, but I do, I just pulled up the OCI video uploads. Like, yep. We're averaging 10 or more views for a lot of weeks for the meetings, which is not a lot, but that means somebody's using it to catch up. Uh, yep. It's not zero. A couple of folks from uh, China or Japan yeah. that were actually following up and would send emails or open issues otherwise. Mm -hmm. I think we'll take care of the doodle schedule poll maybe next week when Amy is back from, from law school and just kind of coordinate that separately while we kind of tackle some issues um, today. I think five minutes is a pretty good... Um, uh, you know, amount of time to wait. I, I, I have the first kind of, you know, couple agenda items. So I'm happy to kind of kick things off um, on, on, on that front if you're, if everyone's okay with that. Cool. So the, the first thing is um, on the distribution spec, we have that vote out for VNO final. Thank you so much, Josh, for um, getting that done. Um, just a heads up when that is closed, uh, we kind of have a small process thing as part of OCI to notify all the members that the release is final and there's kind of this uh, little weird IP commitment thing where they basically have 30 days to kind of potentially back out of the OCI if they so choose to do so uh, based on the IP, IP, <coughs> IPR commitments that they made. So um, this is just a reminder and just kind of wide notification for others that I will go take care of that once the vote is uh, finalized. So just a small small heads up there. Um, it's been a while since we've had to do it. So, uh, on the maintainer activity and audit um, front is so, Amy and I put together a basic little kind of you know there's many ways to kind of gauge activity because you know there's some folks you know that may not do active 
commits but may vote on things as they arrive so we put together a bit of a spreadsheet that went across kind of the different projects and uh you know pulled pull information and kind of shared it with everyone while simultaneously also doing a call for you know uh active you know maintainers that are maybe outside of the you know uh, traditional set of maintainers that we had to see if anyone wanted to volunteer uh to step up and good news is we've, we've had a lot of folks that have uh, actually came up, especially for both image and distribution uh, spec. So uh, on my end, based on kind of the way our process uh, works is, um, you know, I collated all the volunteers for at least distribution and image spec, um, you know, image spec generally being kind of, I think the problem child of, of all those where the other spec seems to have a lot more active folks based on when we looked at the data. Um, we have, I think we have about a handful of volunteers for both the image and distribution spec. Um, the way our process works in OCI is the existing set of maintainers basically have to go vote uh, those folks in. And the idea was to go individually for all the folks that have volunteered based on the existing maintainers uh, viewpoint, get the votes done, and hopefully uh, within a week or two, get the folks that get approved added. And then simultaneously, I'm also asking, you know, folks that may have not been active in the last year or two, uh, potentially to step down. But uh, I prefer to do that after, um, you know, the initial initial call so for adding maintainers. With the vote, with the existing yep. maintainers voting on these uh, set of, you know, nominated or however mm -hmm. the, the list of folks that are stepping up. Is this is there going to be some amount of activity of reaching out and finding those AWOL existing? Um, yep. Folks? I've okay. already reached. I've already reached out to some of the folks that are inactive. Right, the active folks have stated already like they're interested, and you know, some are like, "Hey, I'm a maintainer from Trow, or I do this, you know, hostess registry thing." So it, it's going to be up to the maintainers. I can't make the decision for the maintainers. You kind of have to review those and see if you're game, but there are people that are willing to step up and be active. And I think it's a good time to take a chance um, on expanding. Yeah, no, I guess it was just more of a question if folks are completely AWOL and getting them back involved just even to, to do this delegation. Oh, uh, it shouldn't be an issue for distribution spec at all. Image spec, sure. uh, we'll see how it goes if, 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 if not, but I, I think we could get enough. I think we'll be able to get quorum to meet the minimum minimum vote. If not, we'll we'll may remove people first and then do the vote. But I think we'll be able to to get those folks. I've been reaching out to some of the inact <laughs> I've been reaching out to some of the inactive folks already and getting some responses and some are okay. You know, and and what was what was the quorum on getting new maintainers on? It's two thirds. Two thirds. Two thirds. Okay. That's yep. what I thought. So yeah, for from this perspective, um, if everyone's okay, we'll just go, you know, essentially implement this and roll this out, and you know, start 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 the voting. Um, you know, if there's uh, any particular concerns about this approach, uh, let me know. I think this is kind of the fairest uh, way to do it, based on all the uh, great folks that kind of stepped up. Yeah. Uh as a maintainer on both of those, I think it's a good good approach to at least get things kicked off again. Awesome. Any other thoughts or concerns on this particular topic? Otherwise, we'll just go go through and go through with the motions. I will. Uh, consider... Chris is. Oh, yep. Sorry. Chris, is there any like uh, restrictions on people um, having too many people from one organization? Not on the maintainer role, on the TOB there, there is. Okay. So, yeah, maintainers generally are people just who show up and, and kind of do the work where TOB has a little bit more um, kind of overall oversight for the organization. And we limit that to basically, I think two max uh, for two people from the same company. If I recall, I had a question on the IP release. Yep. So you you said there's like a one month window. Yep. Uh, Is that before it's official or after? After. Basically, uh, if you look at the link I put you, like I've done this for all the other ones. I have to basically a update the website and send an email to all of our members, giving them thirty days potentially to back out of, of their commitments on that if they're uh, if they had some issue um, 
realistically, no one's done this, but this is just part of the rules and chartered process that we have based on kind of the initial agreement we had where everyone basically kind of uh, agreed to not sue each other regarding container related <laughs> pets in the beginning. Gotcha. Yeah. I think there's, there's some history that I'm guessing not everybody's aware of, and even some of us not that drill into <laughs> much details. I mean, uh, the more I scratched the surface on this, I didn't realize how much history was buried in the separation of OCI and CNCF. I mean, yep. Every, every year someone asks, why aren't they the same thing? And I try to remind people. Uh, for OCI, all the cloud providers were involved and happy to support this initiative. We're CNC at the beginning, not so much. So different different reasons. So <laughs> and, and every time we, we think maybe we can do it finally, it's like we get into this IP release and it's like Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I mean it served its purpose, you know, for it, it's actually protected, I think, the container ecosystem overall from some of the more nefarious patent uh, trolling that, that goes on in in my opinion. So Derek, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have all the history on, on that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it's I like was a around, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, it's a back office thing that we kind of uh, do and it's a little bit different than, it's completely, actually completely different than uh, say CNCF, yeah, how it works. Cool, um, let me go through, let me get the agenda back up. So the other, so that that's it. So if everyone's okay on the on the voting, we'll we'll essentially kick um, those those uh, those those processes off over the next uh, week or so. Um, hopefully, it won't take too long, uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, the next kind of thing, I, I think I, I punted you to Phil uh, in the email you sent out today on on kind of uh, work streams and, and working groups and thoughts uh, thoughts there. Yeah. So hopefully, everyone had a chance to to see the email. Um, it's not a ton of information, but there is a link in there to a different HackMD document that already has a few comments uh, from Alexa, who must have stayed up late uh, his time. But um, it's effectively a draft proposal of the idea we talked about two weeks ago. Um, thanks to Derek for writing some of that down um, so obviously it's open for anyone to comment but the goal would be that first of all it, it re kind of triggered the awareness that we had some in-flight charter cleanup that we started last spring that we all ended up in pandemic funk and never finished it uh, i guess we should have said we had extra time to work on it but we didn't um, so hopefully we'll get that cleaned up, but in alongside that, I think this working group ideas is effectively um, an addition to that charter, which means we would want, we would have to have kind of a TOB vote once we're all happy with the language. So, um, so that's out there. Uh, like I said in the note, I will be working with the eight other TOB members to figure out I think we've all decided there's like one or two hours of the day that may, that we can actually have a call. So I'll send out a doodle poll for a couple options late next week and early the following week after that to um, get that on the calendar for the TOB to actually kind of, I think it'd be good if it's on the calendar then it, it forces us to, to actually do the review work between now and then and kind of have it time boxed. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's really it. Um, Do you want me to give like an overview of kind of yeah, level I was, what we're adding here? Yeah, I think, I think that would be good. I did, I did add the link to um, the agenda there if people want to click on that. And there it is in the chat as well. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I think at a high level, we're just trying to scale some of these different conversations and make sure like the right folks and interested folks are involved in at least the development of some of these newer specifications or some of these 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 newer features so it it formalizes that a little bit um in that it, it creates a working group that the tob votes on to establish and it defines what that working group is trying to accomplish 
Uh, so it's it's not completely open ended. It actually has a, an end goal that everybody has agreed to work towards. Um, there's a, there's a certain aspect to it around like including projects and organizations that that want to actually work on an early implementation of it. Um, I know that's one thing uh, various people on OCI have been concerned about with newer specifications is traditionally we've taken working something that's already working and proven in the industry and we've we standardized it. So there wasn't a lot of debate over whether or not this was useful and used because it was already, it, it had already uh, reached that level. Uh, so the working groups, the idea is to kind of follow along almost what we saw with like the HTTP, HTTP process. You see there's like a working group, they start developing drafts and then those get voted on. And uh, not that it's the best example of like working, but, um, at least like that that flow. So you have a working group who's going to develop a draft, and then that draft is actually what would get voted on uh, for initial approval. I just say it was good to say I was. It kind of really fostered people that wanted to work on stuff. Like we've had, you know, obviously we have the recent stuff we've been talking about, but even the things like the multi arc work that you know. Uh, Phil was, you know, we did some work around and some others were interested. There wasn't any real obvious way as to what the next steps was. So you don't have to be a maintainer, you don't have to be a TOB. If you just got a group of people that want to work on something collaboratively, this was a great way to kind of foster that growing community. Um, so I, I thought that was a really good approach to it. Alexa also had some early comments that uh, I think is related to the, the IP release. Uh, that Chris was talking about that, how we actually do releases in that regard. Like if we have a working group and a working group is is publishing these draft specifications. Find your ball. Um, Go find your ball. And Go it's potential that the specifications yeah. aren't necessarily sanctioned by the TOB yet. Yeah, I, I think we would avoid, uh, we basically would treat them as draft specs. They would not be subject to the IPR unless they were final and it would TOB, TOB would have to bless bless that, I think, is, is how we would go about it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I, I tried to differentiate here, like we had the draft and then release candidates and then mm -hmm. the maintainers would go through the normal process of actually releasing the, the final version. Is the idea to just you know work on that hack and deduct, do a little feedback there? Do you ready to put it as a PR? Because then get feedback there. What do you? Propose? Yeah, I think it's it's pretty er, it's pretty early on. Like it started off as just kind of notes from last week, and then I I tried to use language that corresponds more with like the existing charter and 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 lay it out like that. But it's 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 still pretty pretty early on. So like it, any level of feedback is fine. Sure, you can uh, you can nitpick the wording, but also just like the high level, what it's trying to accomplish, I, I think is 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 fair. And that's I think the goal is that you know we have these in-flight charter cleanups as APR that Derek asked Alexa to split into separate PRs, which he said he's going to do this week that this would be, you know, effectively a PR uh, when, when we kind of are all close to feeling like the language is, is there, and then, you know, final kind of edits or comments could happen in the normal PR process at that point. Yeah, maybe time box it, give people a, a, a week and We'll turn it into a PR and go 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 from there. Yep. Well, that's a shorter than usual call. What else do we have to talk about? Yeah. Any other <laughs> agenda items while we have uh, everyone? I, uh, I have a question about working groups. Sorry, I was trying to read and listen and failed at both, I think. Um, 
it, it, is this the uh, a required mechanism for changes to specifications, or is this just a new way of organizing work? The latter. Okay. My thought is that this would apply for, we'd say like major revisions. We talked about like image spec V2. I think it's better that it would go through this process than just like have the image spec V1 existing maintainers try to, uh, like all those like smaller iterations. I, I don't think it makes sense to go through this process, but it's like what everything we've talked about like in OCI V2 or image spec V2, it's, it's not that related to V1 really in many of those cases. I, I think it makes sense to go through. But if it's like I need to, I need to make some small addition to the spec or something like that's, that's not really its scope for this. I think. I, I can imagine anywhere where intentionally making a breaking change would require a lot of coordination amongst uh, stakeholders and agreement that it is a good thing to change and that we'll all implement things and, and work around it. But for you know non-breaking additive changes, uh, yeah, I think the current process works pretty well as soon as we get some maintainers. Yeah, that's certainly my position on like what existing maintainers of these specifications biggest role is, is to preserve backwards compatibility. I, I don't know if the, maybe this is part of what we can do with maintainers, but I, I think that's one of the, the questions that we have is what is backwards compatibility defined? Um, when we're adding, and this has been the root of the conversation we've been having recently, is what does adding behavior mean? And just because it's optional doesn't mean there's an no expectation on it. So I think trying to figure out, like, then the obvious example is adding an annotation, right? Annotations by definition are, are just strings. They're, you know, there's really the only th point of the spec is here's a well known name for it. Other than that, registries don't really care, or the clients necessarily don't even care. Um, adding behavioral things, like I think that's the question we've been struggling with. Like, what exactly does it mean to add something to a, a released version? And having some structure around that will really help because if somebody says they adhere to version one of a spec, but something was added to that after, what, is, what does that mean for a conformance to that? So having some kind of structure, like maybe that is one of the working groups as we figure out what does that mean? Yeah, semantic semantic versions fail at handling this. That was identified a long time ago and something that we decided we, we couldn't solve by V1. <clears throat> that kind of factored into some of those proposals that have kind of lingered. But um, that's, and that's kind of why the, the, the use of optional should or whatever um, is if they don't implement it, that you can still get basic functionality. And like the, all the conformance tests that Josh and other others worked on, is like you could still pull, you could still push, you know, whatever, um, like basic categories of workflows. But in utilizing some some nuanced behavior is completely optional. I think the the Z standard one was a a good example of like what are what's the expectations here in terms of compatibility. I don't think we could ever expect like if new media types and stuff are introduced that older clients would necessarily understand them. Um, but we need to make sure that like if there's a set of uh, like everything we've defined, like if if you come across anything that's outside of what you know to understand, like failing should happen gracefully. And for other things, like I, I think the, the data field is a good example of like, well, if if an older client experiences that, like there's a, like, it'll handle it just fine. It's just gonna go pull the, pull the object. Um, so it's like two different types of issues, but like in some degree, like the only forward compatibility we can have is define how to handle unknown fields and media types. I, mean, I think this is the, the coupling of the distribution which you know turns into registries and image spec, which you know has been used for multiple things as well. And, and I'm gonna try to solve it here. I think this is just one of the, the conversations for a working group is to figure out what does that overlap mean because adding something to one actually impacts both. And what could be ignored in a client may not necessarily can be ignored 
you know, in a registry. And I think that's the, the nuance that we have to just sort through what that means. Because I think we all agree we want some of these behaviors. We're just trying to figure out how to have it done. Aside from there's a conversation about how the implementation might be, but that, I put that aside. In either case, there's implications that I don't know if we've thought through all the way to understand what does it mean to add and what is the expectations customers and, and users would have on those. So I just I think that's the piece that when they're tangled together the way they are, and I've heard that run C and the image spec were, tangled, were or still are to some extent tangled, and that somehow that got detangled. Um, having that structure, I think, will help us be clear, like, yeah, this makes perfect sense. We can add this here, and here's the semantics around it. Oh, this is has this kind of behavior, so we need to treat it differently in some way. Um, that's the kind of detail I'm just trying to get some structure sure. around. I, I think, honestly, a lot of that's already there, even like Derek. Derek said with the Z standard, like expecting old clients to still be able to uh, behave with it properly. That's kind of like one of the figuring out points is that if you wanted to enable some new, you know, either hashing hashing algorithm that's not SHA-256 or compression that's not gzip, that the old clients would <clears throat> gracefully fail because they don't know what to do with it. And that's expected behavior. Um, but just figuring out what it, what is an acceptable level of that uh, is kind of the industry conversation that's the ongoing piece of it. Yeah, I, I just put in the HackMD a couple links to similar uh, ideas. I think it's a very hard problem, uh, and I don't think it's easy to even describe what a breaking change is because it relies on historical context and all kinds of things that are impossible to really say without you know having a, a set of maintainers that have been around for years and know what know what uh, behaviors exist in the wild um so I, I linked to the kubernetes api change guidelines and the golang 1.0 compatibility guarantee i think these are maybe useful background in general for breaking changes but we might want to come up with our own similar documents yeah i think that makes sense like Go is a good example of you can't expect you write, you use features in the newer Go version and then it's going to work on an, on an older version, um, even though the files aren't explicitly versioned. Uh, that's, I think it's, it's been perfectly acceptable. But I mean, that's much different than like, say, an image spec change. We wanted to, somebody wanted to like support like human readable size field or something that's just going to like confuse the heck out of like old clients. And like, I, I, yeah. I think like we can, pretty easily define like what is an acceptable change there. Yeah. And, and goes a little simpler because if you can produce a source input that breaks the compiler, uh, they won't merge it um, unless it's a security problem. But uh, for us, it's a little bit harder, right? We can't just, we don't have an easy binary test. Like, is, is it possible for this to be breaking? I mean, I think that the Go example is interesting because they've broken the runtime a number of times for backwards compatible changes. And like, uh, for example, locking OS threads is, is one, preemption is another one. Um, but the source code has always been compatible. And I think that separating out the image and runtime has some value in that. Um, but then they also have this whole thing of like, you, you can ask for certain features in the runtime or, you know, at compile time, it'll tell you explicitly that this is not okay, but we have a problem that like, we don't necessarily have control over that step of like when the user runs it, you know, is this feature one that's like a required feature or is this a feature that's like an optional feature? I mean, like the compression is like if you think about that one like from a, a registry and client like the, the compression stuff registry don't care it's just a blob right so just send it on in don't care if it's in a manifest as long as we can track it know how to clean up afterwards life's good but the clients could get totally horked if they don't know how to deal with that where other things you know we've been talking about the references lately like sure we might be able to push it in but does it wind up being these you know zombie pieces that are left around that we don't know how to clean up so I think it's, there's just a couple, it's that cross issue that we need to figure out is how do we have capability in one and how does it affect the other? 
I mean, there's lots of ideas like the the phone platforms have figured this out they don't version phones for everything and every phone has different capabilities so there's a capabilities check right so at runtime you can say does the phone support a camera does what's the depth of the camera uh, does it have a front camera a rear camera a microphone so on and so forth so there's lots of ways to kind of do lots of capability checks but those were built in as part of the the phone standards the, the specs for the various phone platforms so maybe that's some of the flexibility that we can start thinking about. But I guess to your point, Phil and Derek, it's like getting, getting the working group piece kind of discussed and merged doesn't really stop working groups from starting to form. Um, and then that kind of helped figure out like, hey, does this model actually work? Because we're actually trying to test it. We've actually done this a couple of times, right? The, you could argue the multi-arc stuff didn't turn in turn out very well. Like we never really got traction on it because we, we discussed it a couple of times, and I think everybody was hoping somebody else would do something. Um, you know, the artifact stuff we did. You know, continue to work at. It took us over a year to finally get kind of settled on which direction. And there was a working group that formed around that, and then there was a culmination of it. So um, that's what I liked because I wasn't one of the maintainers. It wasn't anything to the group at first, but I was able to come in and find people that were able to help me figure out how to scope that. Um, so if we can do that for others to bring in new features, that'd be great as well. I know that, um, Chris, who was it? The, one of the, was it the Alibaba folks? They were trying to do stuff around scanners and, you know, they had some ideas and, you know, kind of gave them a list of stuff of some of the things we've been struggling with. In addition to the call times, they didn't quite know how to engage and we haven't heard from them. It'd be great to be able to get them back engaged again. Yeah, I can reach out. Uh, Josh, I just saw this entry, the new repo for CI images. Was there? Yeah, I just I just added it at the last minute here. Um, yeah, so in part of getting the distribution spec out the door, there was some. Um, Vincent had some old broken image on Docker Hub. Old. Uh, so we had to find we had to find a home for it. So um, there's this repo that is now under the organization that has his source code for that image updated. So um, that's pretty much it. If if any other, it's mostly for use by like the CI and the different projects. If there's any images um, that you're using there that are customized in any way, put it there. Um, I also, one of the images for um, Go linting is actually not custom, but it's mirrored from uh, Docker Hub. So GitHub is not, um, GitHub's registry is not rate limiting as of yet. So if you if you want to get around those types of issues, you can do that. Um, and then there was kind of some internal discussion with distribution spec maintainers about where those images should be um, ultimately hosted. I <laughs> I pretty much want to stay out of that conversation. They're in GitHub right now because um, that's we had a bot to get to GitHub. Um, but I don't see, uh, I don't necessarily see the value in it, but I don't see any reason why we can't mirror that in Quay, Docker Hub, um, yeah. or the cloud's public registries. And then I think Stephen Day actually had the idea, what if we actually hosted our own registry um, at like opencontainers.org, which I thought was an interesting idea. I don't know if that's like a whitelist of, one of the clouds donating some space or Docker Hub. Um, but just wanted to keep people posted that that exists. No, I think that's great. And it, it's it's kind of, it's funny that one of the other conversations that from the past that we never slowed down really to, to do that with was even talking about like um, image, image format, uh, like conformance and even like with the conformance tools that for the distribution spec and otherwise that you could just like 
pull an image that could run against something rather than having to like go get it or build it or otherwise just having those kind of images built every every commit to you know to the chunk um i think it's actually pretty useful and interesting it, to have it yeah it'd be cool to kind of dog food our stuff too like it's it's just using docker and as we all know like docker is its own tool with its own stuff and it would be cool if like we could really do our like really use the open standards um around all the different specs and maybe we can yeah we can like maybe host a registry i don't know the overhead of that but um uh but yeah we just we just needed somewhere for this image so it's there right now and it's not really like an official project uh but if people want to help maintain that or add their images um just let me know how many images do we have when i think about it this is like two or three for, for distribution spec it's two there's one for uh the pandoc project which will convert um the spec in markdown to uh, pdf and html um and i think i'm guessing that's also on image spec and runtime spec somewhere if uh, Vince was involved. And then we also have uh, a, something that lints um, Go source files. Um, that's, that's not modified that we were just, our Travis was failing because Docker Hub was, uh, was rate limiting us like every other time. And I know uh, Justin had said we could get that, um, like kind of on an allow list, but um, it probably costs to put an ID on it. It would, it would actually get rid of the throttling, but. Yeah, but it's also just like, what if we wanted to customize it? I think it's probably better that Open Containers does maintain its own CI uh, images so we don't get um, like man in the middle by the week. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't, I, it's just CI, but um, famous last words. Yeah, no, these images are just used okay. for CI? It's just for Pretty CI much. for doing the release and checking PRs. Yeah. I don't think anybody in the world used that VBAT Pandoc image except for the OCI build process or release process. Um, and I'm completely okay not putting it on Quay. Uh, because I'd created that org to put it in a while ago, but that's it just always seemed too complicated to have yet another org for folks like Chris and Amy to participate and manage. So um, having it all under GitHub seems nicer in general. Yes, I mean I'm happy to offer a custom domain, you know, registry if we want one. It just seems like having one alongside the source with GitHub like, makes sense. Like it, it doesn't preclude it being on Quay and Docker Hub and others, you know, as we in ECR and so forth. But um, there is overhead in it, and just keeping it simple with the, the GitHub integration seems like a logical thing. Um, yeah, I, I it's really, I mean, all of this is not worth more than five minutes of uh, of mentioning. Maybe it's something like going forward with this type of thing. It's something if we do create a uh, working group around, I don't know, maybe there's a testing uh, conformance working group and we can talk about interesting things to do uh, around this. Chris, Chris, we can dust it off. That's <laughs> the conformance working group. I see Jeff yeah. Mark here also. Reboot it. was a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Any other topics to, to bring up for folks? Seems like voting and working groups. Next steps. Yep, just some formalities uh, there. Yep.
Cool. Yeah, I'll send a, a note out, um, kind of the list to, to remind folks, and then we'll just kind of kick those uh, off and, and see where things land, and um, we'll go from there. Sounds good. And then bug folks on distribution spec voting, Josh. <laughs> Oh. I, think it's, I think that one's almost done. That's it's close. So. Yeah, yeah pretty close. close. Yeah. Cool. Exciting. All right. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Thanks, everybody. All right. I'll take all. Take care. Have a good See one. You. Cheers.